Hello, everyone. Oh, you're all going to get your notifications now. Put my phone on silent here. I know I'm on a little earlier than normal. Hi, Terry. Hi, Deb. Deb, I saw your comment about the um, Blue Night Rubber Stamps. Very nice. Hey, Angela. Oh, Terry got her heat gun. Cool. Yeah, I didn't get mine yet, Terry. I'm still waiting. Hi, Stacy. How's your foiling going? Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Connie. All right. We're going to give it a minute. Everybody's going to jump on. So, Arteza has sent me two things. Um, they sent me the new mica powders. They're also sending me the new acrylic markers. I didn't get those yet, but I'm assuming they will either arrive tomorrow or Monday. Um, so, that'll be interesting to try those out. Um so what's cool about this is, oh, you found a mini mink, didn't you, Stacy? Hi, Marco. Hi, Jeannie. I know, Deb, they're addicting. So if you guys have seen last couple videos I did, it seems like Perfect Pearls are coming back. And they come in these little pots, and they're mica powders. And Ranger has said that these have a built-in binder so if you use it in conjunction with perfect medium ink with your perfect pearls and then you spritz them with some water it locks in the mica okay that's what i've been doing I, except i've been using versamark instead of perfect medium never had an issue with my perfect pearls um rubbing off okay but um, you can buy these in individual pots if you can find them. They used to sell them in four packs. I don't know if they still do or not. I'll look it up for you. Um, I know, Deb, $40 for a mini mink. Yeah. Oh, what'd you find, Stacy? Oh, mink toner spray. Cool. Um, so, Arteza sent me these mica powders, and I believe there's a 20 set. I don't know. I'll look it up for you guys, and I'll link it down below. There is. I also have an Arteza discount code right now, too, so... I'll get you that. But they can't, this is 60 colors, and what they say is 60 vibrant colors, multi-purpose, cosmetic grade, non-toxic mica powder. Okay. Um, they do list all the colors in the back. Yes, it is manufactured in China, unfortunately. Um, but it says here, like, if you want to use it to make soap, Nail polish, eyeshadows, makeup, epoxy. You can mix it with all of those mixed media things. Um, like Leah and I have been looking into maybe trying out some soap making. I don't know. But I wanted to see how it compares to Perfect Pearls because that's what I would use them for. So I have some plain old dark card stock and I also have some plain old white card stock. So I thought let's stamp it out. Let's mix it up with some things and let's see what happens. Okay. And, of course, you guys are going to have to remind me to write down what we're doing it on. I know there's a lot of colors. Hi, Catherine. Hi, Nikki. All right, so I just have my little cheapy paper here. I grabbed two stamps. One is the lips for the solid look, and one is this more detailed kind of like butterfly stamps. And what I want to do is we'll start on the white paper and then we'll move our way into the darker paper. So I wanna do um, perfect medium, Versa Mark, um, water, and mink. And I think that's what I want to do here. So my idea is, so for example, perfect medium. 
crusty old perfect medium ink pad. Super sticky stuff, right? And of course, the first thing I did is put mine in like rainbow order because I'm a dork like that. <laughs> Leah's like, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, they're in different colors. I have to put them in rainbow order. <laughs> So this is perfect medium, super sticky. Now I'm going to clean my stamps off. Hi, Fairy Fox. Yeah, I have um, I have black cardstock and white cardstock. I think it's really going to show up better on the black cardstock. I want to see what the um, permanency is of it on these two. Okay, next one is going to be Versamark, my dirty Versamark ink pad. Um, I know you guys can't see, but definitely the perfect medium is much thicker than the Versamark. Oopsie. Okay. And then for the last two, we're going to mix it up with some water and I, I'm going to use the mink reactive paint. So deco gel, whatever sticky mix medium you have. Okay. Um, I want to grab a brush for that. Crusty brush. Okay. So here we go. It comes with these instructions or these basically saying that they're by weight, not by, don't go by the visual balance of the what's in there. I know Christopher Allen did a video on them a couple nights ago. Hi, she's a bell. Well, that's what I'm going to try to figure out, Stacy, if we need to seal it. And I have um, spray, like clear, um, what do you call it? I can't speak today. Clear um, spray paint, basically, is what it is, like gloss or whatever. So it comes with this cool little tiny little baby spoon if you want to scoop it out. Um, I'm just going to grab some colors that look bright here, and I'm basically going to just brush it on. So what's cool is they don't come with any plastic on them. There's no shaker lids. There's no um, plastic on the top, so just be careful. I'm going to grab a, a brush. This is what I would normally do is grab the brush and wipe over it. So it works pretty much the same way as Perfect Pearls does. Hello. Hi, Linda. Hi, Pet Mom. So you can see you get really good coverage with the Perfect Pearls. The reason we do is because, I mean, not per per Perfect Medium. And that's because perfect medium, think of it as VersaFine times, or VersaMark times 100. It's super sticky. Okay. So then when we move over to the VersaMark, it's not as sticky, but we're going to get the same results here. So pretty good. I'm just going to shake off this excess. And use my big brush of goodness. Brush it all off. Now, I will say there's this kind of residue around the outside. You can wipe it down, which we will do with our um, microfiber towel to wipe that off. But in terms of Using both of those inks, the Perfect Medium and the Versamark, they stamped out beautifully and they have about the same coverage. So really not a huge difference. The Perfect Medium is more sticky. Um, the Versamark is a little bit more defined. You can see that in the lips. 
the little lines in the lips show up more in the Versamark stamped image than they do in the Perfect Medium. But again, we're looking at adhesive properties here, so we'll see how this works when we go to try to wipe it off. Okay. The next test I wanted to do was I wanted to take a little bit of this onto my media mat here. Yeah, there is more detail, Nikki, because it's not as uh, sticky or thick. That's the word I want to use, thick. Okay, so I'm taking a little glob of this. Actually, I'm going to take two little globs of this. making a giant mess on my media mat. Let me put the lid back on here. The color of this one is called bright blue and it is just that. And I don't know if you guys can see, but there's definitely that pearl sheer um, shine to this. So, oh, you know what we could probably do also is add some of this to, here we go. Speaking of, let me grab my little spoon. This is just a little Ranger Mr. Bottle um, filled with water. It's usually what I use to set my Perfect Pearls. But we're gonna use it today as our little shaker guinea pig and put a couple spoons of this little stuff in there. And these are all um, techniques you can also do with Perfect Pearls. But I think 60 colors from Arteza is cool. And like I said, they gave me a discount coupon. I'll just have to look it up for you. All right, so in little pile number one here, I'm just gonna put a couple drops of water. Oops. And I'm gonna take my brush and kind of mix in that water, just like we just did with the sprayer, actually. And we're just gonna that on so you could use this as like a shimmery watercolor very pretty I mean they are they say that you can use it in cosmetics and soap and stuff like that so that's pretty Let's see how that dries okay then in the other pile here I'm gonna take a little dab of this reactive paint and see how it works. I picked this because it's um, clear-ish, ew, oozing everywhere. Remember I said don't store it upside down, Nance? Clearly you don't listen to yourself. Now it's just gushing out everywhere. Wasting product! Way too much of that. Quick, stamp something, Nance. Alright. Clean up my my globby mess here. I don't even know why. All right. So I'm going to take this globby mess. I don't know if you guys can see it and pull some of that mica over into it and kind of mix up my own little paint, we'll call it. And I picked, like I said, this particular product because it's a clear paint, you know, so you could use like gesso, um, transfer gel. I mean, you could use a medium, mixed medium gel, anything you have. Um, but the color doesn't get diluted. It's still very nice and bright. And I think because this dries pretty glossy, we will have a nice glossy sheen to it. But you could probably use matte medium as well. Just giving you some different options here on what to do. So... We're gonna set these aside a second to dry and we're gonna recreate that on black paper. Yeah, the spray fixatives are usually better. They say the water because that's what Tim Holtz recommends with the Ranger ones. this dries out. Let me get some of this down here. Okay. 
my ink pads already have Versamark. We'll start with that. Yeah, hairspray. Sure. Oh, I will, no, no one asked me that. Hold on, I'll tell you in just a second what size are the bottles. I think it's a half an ounce, if that. Hold on. They are not even a half, they say 0.5 grams or 0.18, 1, 0.18, 18 ounce. So it's not even a half an ounce. It's like a less than a quarter of an ounce but you get a lot of product in there just depending on again the the weight of the mica so this one is cotton white and it's filled all the way to the top where I've seen some of the other ones and there's not a lot in them but they say they go by weight not by volume actually these are all pretty full I want to show you guys some of the, they have these cool like iridescent colors too. So I'll show you guys that. Yeah, I want to test out some of these. Um, they have these iridescent kind of colors. So they, they almost look like the like color shift. So I want to see how those look as well. I'm just wondering what you mix it with if you're trying to do makeup to make it permanent. Um, let me pick a different color here. Here we go. Magenta. Let me clean this off. So this stamping it with Versamark and rubbing it over is how I would primarily use it. That's how I use the majority of my Perfect Pearls. I think they look great on dark card stock. They give a great pop of color. But I know a lot of you guys do mixed media and you, you know, are looking for ways to kind of give things a shine and this is a good way to kind of do that. And honestly, I never use my Perfect Medium ink pad. In fact, I couldn't even find it <laughs> because I never use it because I think that that is just too sticky for me. And you can see you do lose some of that detail. I just use Versa marking for everything. But I wanted to give it the benefit of the doubt because, like I said, Perfect Pearls... Um, they advertise that you need to use the perfect medium if you want to set it, so. All right, I'm just gonna shake this off and brush off some of that extra. And while we wait for those two to dry, let me just clean this little mess area over here real quick. Actually, nobody look, I'm gonna waste a Clorox wipe. These are more important in my craft room right now. Sorry, coronavirus, stay out of my house. So it is like makeup, it is into that brush. Okay. <laughs> it 
Right, Carolyn? If we can make our own hand sanitizer, we're going to have to make our own makeup. Actually, I was thinking that today. Like, I should probably go through my, since we all have this home time now, it would be a good time to go through, like, your kitchen fridge, your cabinets, your spice racks. You know, a lot of people don't realize a lot of that stuff expires. Um, and makeup also expires. So, you know, it's a good time to go through. And if it smells funky, looks funky, time to get rid of it. Um, makeup, they say it's like six months to a year with makeup. You're supposed to throw it out because it can get moldy and give you bacterial infections. I did not know that. Like mascara and if, you, if you're getting a lot of breakouts, could be because of your makeup. Your sponges you're supposed to clean and then the sponges you're supposed to throw away after so long. So many uses. My sister is the makeup booty guru. But she ain't here right now. Did anybody see Kiki log on? She might still be working. She's working from home. Well, I guess we're all working from home now. All right. Clean up my little mess here. And then we will continue on with our experimentos. Okay, so this is on the white paper. Spices are a year, huh? For painting, you can add it. Yeah, pouring medium or not. That's what I was thinking. That's why I used the clear mink paint. Good idea, Elizabeth. Um... All right, so here I just took the shimmer powder with water and rubbed it on my hand. And it rubbed off. <laughs> so clearly it does not have a binder in it. I mean, it's stained a little bit, but it doesn't have a binder in it. So we need to find a binder that's going to work. Again, probably clear lip gloss if you're going to make your own kind of lip gloss. I have no idea what you use for eyeshadow. I don't make makeup. Um, but we'll see how this works. I am just going to take a paper towel and I'm going to rub each of these and see where it comes off. Hi, Charlene. Okay. So first with the perfect medium. Yeah, definitely smears off there. So it's not locked in there. Versamark probably have the same result. Same thing, Versamark also smears. Water, oh, definitely smeared there. And then the mink paint, I don't know if this is dry yet, but this should not smear. Nope, it is dry because that is a paint. It's locked it in, okay? So if you want to use it for mixed media things, um, you can use it like, like um, you guys were saying with adding it to... Oh, I didn't put enough in here for it to even show up. That was a fail. It's just plain water. Oh, look at that. Water reactivates it, too. Okay, so you definitely need to use a binder. So I'm going to show you some binders that I would use or recommend. And then we'll test out our other paper here. So this is what I would show you as uh, my recommendations. If you use pan pastels, you've already seen me use these. Okay, so number one, someone said um, hairspray. I think Terry said that. So yeah, hairspray would work. Um, word of caution. You want to do this in a well-ventilated area. So after you've stamped out your images, everything's dried. Have yourself a little spray box, okay? This is a My Favorite Things box that I got. And... Hi, Leanne. Hi, Rose. I put paper towels in the bottom line. You can see I do a lot of spritzing in here. So my Tattered Angel sprays, my Firework sprays, my Distress sprays, everything gets sprayed in here. The other thing I spray is when I'm doing Pan Pastels, I spray. So that's what I would do here. I would put this down and I would spray it with a fixative 
And the two fixatives that I have are this Krylon Shortcuts. Um, this one's clear gloss. This is probably the one I would use because I don't want to lose any of my sheen because this has a very beautiful pearlescent sheen to it. So I don't want to lose any of that. Same thing when you're using a mixed media item with it. I would use something with a gloss to it. If you use a matte paste, you're going to lose that. Um, so for example... You know, you could mix it with texture paste transparent gloss or texture paste transparent matte. This is going to kind of defeat the purpose, I think, because when you use the matte, it's you're going to lose all of that shiny pearl goodness, right? So I wouldn't use a matte formula. I would use a gloss formula. Same thing with spraying it down. There is Krylon matte finish. Now, I bought this specifically for my pan pastels because pan pastels are kind of a chalky um, substance they don't have a gloss to them so I don't have a problem spraying matte finish on those but for something like this I would probably go with a gloss finish so that it doesn't lo lose its shine and sparkle if that makes sense so then you just put it in your box and you do real quick that's it that's the same thing you would do with hairspray it dries very quickly it is paint so <coughs> there is gonna be fumes so you want to do it in an open area. Um, I usually move mine behind. There's a table behind me and let it set back there for a few minutes to dry. So we're going to do that. Let that dry back there. Woo. What about microglaze? So this is my thought on the microglaze and we will actually test it out. The micro glaze is probably going to um, move it, but we can test it out. I'm gonna grab some more paper. Um, I guess I should try that on glossy paper. Oh, oh, also, before I forget, um, did you guys get the email from Creative Vision Stamps about the virtual stamp show sale? There's five or six vendors on there. Marco's Paper, I believe, is on there. Uh, Cut Cardstock is on there. Of course, Creative Vision Stamps is on there. You can get a discount from the retailers since they can't um, go out to shows right now. You can order online and you get a discount from ordering online so go check that out all right I'm going to stamp this in Versamark I like the lips because they're nice full lips what the heck all right and I think these lips should be this pink color rose pink okay so shop online we can't go anywhere post office hasn't shut down yet so let's take advantage and support these mom and pop retailers that can't go out and uh, make their quotas so we need to help them and help ourselves during quarantine grab another brush here You want to kind of use this sparingly. I don't like dumping this out and then that's a really small lid to try to dump it back in. So I think sticking the brush in there, as long as your brush isn't contaminated, you should be okay. Or scoop a little out on your mat or in the lid. I certainly would not stick my brush in there if I had stuck it in medium or glycerin or something like that. That's pretty. Ooh, I like that. Okay, so that one was called Rose Pink. Very, very pretty. And then we're just gonna brush off the excess. Okay, I'm gonna give this a second to set before I go at it with the Distress uh, Microglaze. Good question. 
Micro glaze is like a wax. So what it does is it buffs into your paper and it locks your paper in. So think of it like a wax, a sealant wax. So um, the answer is no, it doesn't really dry. It just goes in and fills in the pore surfaces just like wax does. Oh my gosh, I didn't even realize that, Catherine. There's 52 people watching. Oh my gosh. So hopefully everybody. Versamark uses less powder. It does, Charlene. It uses less powder and it's not as thick in the lobby. Cool. So look into that. Well, I will say is if you purchase this, it does last a really, really, really long time. And I like to put it on with a little um, distress sponge. Let me grab one of my little dauber tools here. I'm just a fear. It's uh, afraid that it's going to... Um, Mine is Judikins and will buff to a gloss, waterproof, fade proof. Yep. That's what it does. It's a wax. Okay, I'm going to start off the mat here and swirl it in. Make sure my sponge is covered. It takes a tiny, tiny bit. And cross your fingers, guys. I'm being very gentle with this. Okay, it is smearing it, which is what I was afraid of, but... There he goes. <laughs> That's what I was afraid is going to happen. You can see here it lifted it right up. So it probably will seal it in. You just got to be very light-handed with it. So I'm going to leave that alone for a second. As soon as you touch it, it's going to lift. It's going to lift. Oh, he leaves his in. Yeah, I put a little piece of Velcro on mine. Thanks, Deb. Okay, I wanted to show you guys, we're gonna set this aside and we'll buff it in a moment. Um, what these um, cool colors look like. Oh, here's my paper. I call them the cool colors because to me they're cool colors, like the iridescent ones. Let me just grab a paper towel and clean my brush off. This is a Perfect Pearls brush, actually. It's one of the old ones because it's got the crappy, crusty uh, bristles. I guess I could grab a nice soft one. Yeah, that's why I stick mine on here. It doesn't dry out or anything. I just do like this. So that way I know that's my Distress Glaze one. So let me, I'm going to stamp a big background stamp one. Oh, I got the brand new one. Yes, it's on the desk. I'm just going to leave it like this. We're going to ink this up. my handle. That's better. I'm so spoiled with these Blue Knight rubber stamps handles now. My heart is broken because I can't go to the stamp show. <laughs> I did go and buy a lot of junk food for the kids today because rumor has it. Rumor has it. State of Pennsylvania is on lockdown starting tomorrow. looks pretty good. Put this over here. Okay, I'm going to start with there. Okay, these are called the glows and the chameleons. Glow, glow, 
glow, glow, another glow, and then two chameleons. So these are called glow and chameleons. And to me, they have this iridescent look to them. And I think what happens is they're kind of like color shifting where they're going to look one way on white and another way on the dark. And it usually shows up better on dark cardstock. So we're gonna try these out. I gotta tell you, there is a, always with Arteza, it is a bright range of colors. There is red, orange, yellows, greens, blues, purples, pinks, gold, silvers, brown, grays, whites, pearls. There's a whole array of colors. You One of these and you never need to buy any more perfect pearls. Okay, so this one is called, way too much of my brush, uh, Ballerina Glow. Oh yeah, that is a pink. That's exactly what they are. They're like color shifting, just like those opal powders are. Oh, that is gorgeous. It's a light pink. I'm gonna go through all of these and then we'll hold them up. I'll try to keep them in order here. And I'm gonna clean my brush off in between colors here. Yeah, I did, Connie, you're right, because I bought, like, I was doing really good with, like, cooking healthy food for them, and then they're like, I don't want that. Don't we have any snacks? And I'm like, you guys. So they got their snacks today. You should just, ugh. Oh, this one had a lid. This is the only one that had a lid on it. Maybe the lids are stuck inside the caps. Okay, anyway, this one's called Sage Glow. So I bet you it has like a greenish tint to it. Let's try not to stick the whole brush in there, Nance. Yep. Ooh, if you don't have opal powders, that, I mean, the opal shimmers, that's what this is like. Oh, is it pretty? I like it. All right, somebody needs to tell me how to make this in the eyeshadow because uh, I'm loving it. These are gorgeous. Okay, next one is called Bubblegum Glow. You know what look cool? Oh, you guys, if we double stamp this. Hold on, I'll show you what I mean. I don't know why these have these things in them and the other ones didn't. Like, I bet we could make these in the embossing powders. Oh my gosh, the ideas are coming. Bubblegum Glow, this is probably another light pink. Oh, this is a darker pink. Ooh, that's pretty. Okay, I'm gonna run out of paper and have to stamp another one. And I'll hold it up so you guys can see it. I know you can't see it very well. Periwinkle Glow. These are exactly like the opal powders. I mean, I keep saying op opal polishes. Okay, this one is going to be purpley. Yep. It's a lilac purple. It is periwinkle, actually. Perfect name for it. Imagine stamping fireworks and then coloring these in. Oh, they're going to be gorgeous. Okay, and then this one is called Gold Glow. And these are all the glow powders. So the glow powders are color shifting. Yeah, that's a gold. So on regular white cardstock, they're going to look white. When you stamp these and color over them in black cardstock, that's where you get these beautiful colors. So we have Ballerina Glow, Sage Glow, Bubblegum Glow, Periwinkle Glow, and Gold Glow. And they are exactly as their names describe. Now that's something Perfect Pearls doesn't have. And on white paper, they're just going to kind of look white. They're all white in the jars. Okay, so that's really cool. I want to do another one with these. These are called chameleons. So I'm guessing these are true color shifts. We're going to stamp those out on black and white. Let's do this. Aw, thank you, Selma. Now you guys are keeping me busy. 
Yeah, and I will link everything for you. Like I said, Arteza gave me a discount um, code. I just have to look everything up and then I can post it for you guys. So this one is called Chameleon Green, and it has a gold look to it. So I think it's going to look gold on white paper. So here's one of the bottles. Look at how much is not in this bottle. This is way less in this bottle than some of the other ones. So they, they say they go by weight. So this is a heavier substance. But this mica is gold, and you can see specks of green in it. It's very pretty. Oh, it's like a light gold. That's so sheer. Hold on, let me get more product. I can't even see it. It's so sheer. Hold on. It looks like fairy dust. If fairy dust were real, this is what it would look like. <laughs> okay, so very sheer, very hard to see. It does have a gold sparkle to it when it's on white paper. Let's see it. I bet it pops on this black paper. Oh, it's green. Wow. It's like an emerald green. So pretty. You guys, I'm like, what can we make with this? Please, somebody get me the makeup recipe. Okay. So that was chameleon green. So on the white paper, it's a very light sheer gold. Can you see that? And then on the black paper, it's, oh, look at that gorgeous green color. That is beautiful. Okay, let's do the other one. Uh, this lip stamp is an old cheapy one. <laughs> it's like dollar brand from Michaels. I don't know. <laughs> Craft Smart wooden stamp. <laughs> it was one of those, you know, when you go into Michaels, they have the little dollar carts right there. That's what it was. <laughs> okay, Chameleon Blue. This has a purple tint to it. So let's see how it looks. Oh, it looks brown. It looks like coffee. That's different. Okay. It looks like coffee. Okay, let's see how it looks over here on the dark paper. We're just gonna take this excess and wipe it off. Okay, it's a deep blue, like a sea blue, I would say. Hold on, let's get some more. Some more, please. Yeah, it's a dark, dark blue. It's not as vibrant as the green. Way too much product there. Look at me, guys. I'm so cheap. I'm trying to put it back in the bottle. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to just wipe both of these off quick. If you don't have one of these makeup brushes, I use it for everything. You guys have seen me. I use it to dust off my foiling, my embossing, Perfect Pearls. I use it for everything. It's not very expensive. It's a one-inch Royal Soft Grip mop brush they call it but it is super soft and i use it for everything and i will link that for you guys as well it's only a couple bucks okay let's show this one now so there you can see it's it's very much like a chocolate color on the white paper and then on the black paper it's a dark blue Jean Ann, they're very similar to Perfect Pearls, except they don't have a binder in them. God, that green just glows. If you're doing Halloween stuff and you're doing like creepy, slimy stuff, that's really cool. Oh, I bet if you mix it with glow in the dark paint, it would be even better. Oh, that's what I wanted to try. Well, not the glow in the dark paint thing. See, ADHD is kicking in, guys. 
the idea is, all right, I'm just going to spray a little water on my mat, wipe this down. And of course, then you need to set it. You got to spray these and set them. I'm just going to move these to the side for now. I'm not going to set them. But here's my thought. What if we made them into embossing powders? How would we do that? I'm going to show you how. Do, 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 Okay, so let me move my dirty stamps out of the way. This may not work. Actually, now that I think about it, it might backfire on me. Might backfire in a big kind of way. All right, I need a clear stamp. Come on, Nancy. We got 80 billion stamps around you. Uh, Stacy, I don't know. Arteza sent it to me, but I will link it for you. And like I said, there's a, they gave me a discount coupon. Hi, Catherine. Yeah, D, you just missed it. I will show you, D. I did mix it with the, uh, mink gel. Same thing as transfer gel. Okay. Here's what I'm going to try to do. This might not work. It might blow up because we only have one layer of sticky here. So I'm trying to figure out how to make it two layers of sticky. Unless we do it back. I don't know. We'll see. Okay. So, well, we can do the reverse. Hold, please. <laughs> A little out of my wacky zone here. Hold, hold on with me. Okay, I put a stamp there. This actually was the stamp set I used when I did the perfect pearls thing. So I stamp that with Versamark, and then I put a blob of Versamark on this side. Okay. Now I want a beautiful golden yellow. Oh. Lemongrass green, they're calling it. Frosty sage green. This looks like yellow to me. We're going to take this one. I guess there's no yellow. Well, there's gold. We're going to take this lemongrass green because it's pretty. That's what I'm thinking, Jean Ann. Because I think this other way is not going to work. So, Oh, that is so good. Beautiful. All right. I don't know why they named this lemongrass green because it is not green. It is yellow and it is a beautiful golden yellow. So the other way you can do it is I showed this method in my recent um, Blue Knight rubber stamps was the reverse where you put the color down. It works really well with solid stamps. Way too much powder there, Nance. And then what you can do is actually lift the color. See how it lifted it? So you can do it this way or the reverse by lifting the powder, which is cool, and you can seal it. What I was thinking was of double stamping it, which is why I originally put this in the Misty, because I was thinking if we could stamp it again with clear, but I think this is gonna lift the color. We'll find out. Oh, 
Oh, it didn't. Okay, good. Maybe because my stamp's not completely lined up. And I'm gonna use some ultra fine embossing powder. Let me do that over here. This is the Brutus Monroe Ultra Fine, any kind of clear embossing powder you have. And we're gonna heat it up. That's interesting. That's not what I wanted to happen, but it's cool. So when I put it back in the misty, I'm off on the alignment just a smidgen, but it <laughs> actually worked in my favor. You can actually see the black outline is from the embossing powder and the gold is left behind. It's pretty. Yeah, this, I just put more Versamark on there and lifted it up, but you could do water. Yep. Or we can do the mixing. Let's do a little sample of mixing here. Um, my little scoopy scoop. I'm gonna take a little scoop. Of embossing powder. Okay, two scoops. It's like Raisin Bran, two scoops, not just one. And I'm gonna pick another color. Let's see, let's do a purple. Amethyst purple. Huh, that's weird that some of these have this and some of them don't. I think they're probably inside the lid. Maybe they sent me a sample box, who knows. <laughs> and I'm gonna take a scoop of color. Oh, that's way too much color, that's all right. again. Now here's the problem. You have to make sure you have enough clear embossing powder because just because you have coverage on this does not mean you have coverage, if you know what I mean. Because the powder's on there, you gotta make sure you have enough clear embossing powder. Less color, more embossing powder is what I would say. All right, I don't know how exactly this is gonna work might be a fail. Hold on. Because now I got powder everywhere. All right, where's my brush? Um, I don't think that's going to work. Let me see if it's sticky enough for me to put embossing powder over it. Nancy, you're going to waste embossing powder, I know, but it's for the good of crafting. Oh, look, it sticks. I didn't think it was gonna, eh, it mostly sticks. It doesn't completely stick. Maybe we can't emboss with it. Hold on. Actually, it's not great, but you can see half of it is embossed, half of it is just powder. Probably best just to either double stamp it like I did here 
or just set it in place because let me move this out of the way. Yeah, I'm going to have a link and a coupon for you guys. Hold on. Oh, okay. It actually did lock it in. This is not locked in. That's a mess. Okay, so we can double stamp and we can mix it with embossing powders. So there's another way we can lock it in. So that's pretty cool. If you have little jars, you can make your own little mix it yourself uh, embossing powders. Didn't lose any of its shimmer. That's pretty cool. What else you guys want me to try? Let me go back and recap what we've done so you guys can see for those of you just joining. So Arteza sent me these. I will have a link and a discount code for you guys. You just got to give me a few minutes to get it online there. Um, what we tried was, okay, so first thing we tried was stamping them out on white paper. They do show a nice shimmer on white paper. I believe, in my opinion, the best way to use the utilize the sheer um mica part of it or the pearlescent part of it is to use it on black paper so personal preference but you can use them on white paper um and then what you get is i stamped them out with perfect medium the perfect medium i believe is just too sticky um it we lost some of our detail in stamping it out in perfect medium then i stamped it out in per inversa mark and inversa mark they stamped out beautifully but you can see the smear marks on both of these which tells me there's no resin in perfect medium or versa mark to set them so you will need to set them and we'll talk about that in a second then i added water you can make a watercolor with these that worked fine and then i added the mink paste and you can use any kind of um texture paste uh, deco paste mod podge any of those will work with this and it dries and it locks it in if you're going to use anything else like versamark or water and it doesn't have a binder in it like the the texture mediums do then you need to set them so to set them we sprayed with um we sprayed with our little gloss spray. You can also use hairspray. Um, and when you spray them, then it's going to set them into place. So you can see that these are set now. They didn't lose any of their shine or gloss. Now there is a matte spray and there's a gloss spray. I would recommend the gloss spray, but they these are definitely not coming off now so these are set so you need to make sure you set them when you're done using them just like pan pastels okay so then i used what they call their glow colors and they have um ballerina glow sage glow bubblegum glow periwinkle glow and gold glow and these are like the opal polishes where they're very sheer on white paper they look gold on white paper but on black paper you can see how those colors just pop very much like the opal polishes do okay then we stamped out the two chameleon colors so we have chameleon green and chameleon blue and they don't look like much on white paper you can see them here this one looks like a really light gold this one looks like a chocolate brown but on black paper they really come alive hi jan hey d Okay, then um, someone asked about locking it in with uh, micro distress. So I stamped it on gloss cardstock. The micro distress, you have, you could use it, but you have to be very careful because once you start rubbing it, because they're not set, the powder starts to rub off. Now this one we've had sitting for a minute, so I should be able to buff this with the paper towel and see how it holds up. Yeah, and it just came off. So I would not recommend Micro Distress Ink. It was a great idea. Unfortunately, because these powders sit on top, there's no way of kind of locking them in. 
So that was that experiment. And then we played around with embossing. And here I stamped it once and then stamped again with clear embossing powder. And here I mixed it with clear embossing powder. We made our own little embossing powder and they stamped beautifully. And I also wanted to show the reverse result. If you put Versamark down and you lift with the stamped images, you get the reverse. Same thing though, once I'm done, I would definitely spray um, that if we're gonna do the reverse. And I did a beautiful card with the Blue Knight Rubber Stamps Elephants. I don't have the card to show you guys, but if you go back and check my Blue Knight Rubber Stamps playlist, I show how I um, stamped the, I did the whole background in like a dark blue, and then I stamped the elephants, which were a solid image, and it lifted, and it looked like these elephants were walking in the night, and it was a really beautiful card. And like I said, you just have to use some kind of fixative, just like we do with Perfect Pearls. Perfect Pearls, we spritz with water, um, but you get a lot of colors here. So you can use them in the same ways as Perfect Pearls, and I like the little tubs of color. I'm trying to see here if this tells us how much... Does anybody have a Perfect Pearls package that tells you how much powder you get? I don't have the original packaging. But I have two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 28 Perfect Pearl colors. And I bought them in packages of four each. And now I have 60 with the Arteza, so I am super excited. Hey, Kawana. Hey, Bonnie. Yes, Nikki, get your stuff out. <laughs> so Tracy and I were talking about, um, let's do some kind of a challenge where um, we were thinking about just doing like a challenge on our two YouTubes. Maybe we can get some other people involved where you get out some kind of old products, um, something you haven't used in a really long time. Maybe it's something you bought and you just have no idea how, how you want to use it. You know, you just bought it out of an impulse or maybe somebody gave it to you. I don't know. But something that is um, not new in your stash, sitting there. You don't know when you're gonna use it. We want you guys to get those projects out. So I need to figure out a way how we can um, post. And, um, you know, we'll just do this for fun. You guys are sitting around, we're all sitting around. Catherine, this is only my first video for today, honey. <laughs> Um, you know, we're all trying to keep each other positive, keep each other motivated. So I was thinking if everybody makes a card, maybe we can post it like on Fosta, uh, yeah, Fosta, um, um, Facebook or Instagram <coughs> just to inspire each other to be crafty. Um, and then I'll talk to Tracy. Maybe we can do some kind of a giveaway. I don't know yet. Um, so what do you guys feel about doing a challenge? Should we do some kind of a challenge? How do you guys feel about that? And I don't want you to be shy. It's just for fun. Again, we don't judge here. We are at all equal opportunity crafting YouTube page. And... I love every single one of you, whether you've been hiding in the shadows and never commented or whether you comment on every video or whether you are new to crafting or whether you are, I don't know, doing crafting for years and years. Oh, one of the things I forgot to mention is you can put it in a spray mister and make a color out of it. I didn't put enough color in this, but let me put some more color in here and see if we can get this to uh, spritz us some fancy colors. Ooh, almost dropped it. I'm gonna pick a really dark blue and mix it. Ooh, sapphire blue. See, some of these have things and some of them don't. Whoop.
What, Terry? Who wants to join that? You want me to make that? That's a lot of mica gnats. Let me see here. This is a little Nuvo tonic scoopy scoop. Oh, look at that. It's like the perfect fit. Yeah, Susie, that's pretty much what it's like. Um, You just need an empty pen. I bet you could. Do I have an empty one? Hold on. It's an ingenious idea, Susie. I don't think I have an empty one, but you know what? I do have an empty brush pen. Same thing, right? Let's do this. are geniuses. Aha! Here we go. And I'm going to add one of those um, the golds because I think the golds are really pretty for that. Clean my little scoopy scoop up. So I'm taking one of these. This is a Recollections brand brush pen. Okay, here's the issue. How are we going to get, this might be too small of a barrel. Let me find one with a little bigger barrel. Oh, this is one of those you got to turn it backwards kind of things. All right, this barrel's a little bigger. Where's the tiny spoon, Scoopy? Let's try that. See, this is why I like to do lives. I said to Leah, should I record it or do a live? And I thought, you know what? There's more interaction when I can do a live. And I like to see you guys' comments and questions. Your gold. See, the lids are stuck in there. Even that's too big. I need a much smaller scoop. in there. I'm just packing it in. All right, I don't know if that's enough or not, but we'll try it. So, Nance, what'd you do? Oh, made glitter, mica powders, sold it online. <laughs> Buy three powders, get a free roll of toilet paper. Hi, Fairy Fox. Okay, so this is just an old brush pen. It just had water in it, and I added some of the gold mica. Let's see if it comes out and makes a Wink of Stella pen. Here's the problem you're going to have with this. Is because there's no binder, again, you're going to have to spray set this. So even if we get this to work... Um... Once we put it on, like if you put it over stamped images, there's a chance that it could flake off. So you're going to have to spray it. Just remember that. Come on. All right, we're going to give this a second for that mica to drop down. 
Here's the spray. We'll do the spray on here. Oh, there it is. Ooh, that is bright blue. Spray it on here. So it definitely works as a spray. If you want to make a mica spray, just remember, you got to set it. You got to spray it to set it. So that's cool. There's a lot of mica in there. Let me go back to my little brush pen. Carmen Arteza Mica 60 Colors. And I'm going to provide a link for you guys. And they sent me a discount code. I think the discount code is 10 or 15% off or something like that. And if you guys use my link, that's when they send me more stuff. So the more times you use my link, the more times I get to sample the stuff. And the new Arteza um, Acrylic brush or the acrylic pens are on their way so i'll be able to try those out too it's just not coming out here i can see all the gold mica in there it's beautiful but it's not coming out of the pen And I'm squeezing the lights out of it. You can see it like slowly inching its way down the barrel. We're getting some gold now. Come on, let's go. Alright, maybe the shimmer pen is not going to work for us. I do see a little bit of shimmer coming out. But it's not as much as the Wink Stella. And I, there's a lot in there. Can you guys see how much is in? There's a lot of mica in there. But I think it's having a problem going down into the actual brush barrel. Like there's a little tiny little tube in there. And I think it's probably just getting stuck in that tube and the water's coming out and the mica isn't. That's what I suspect is happening. Because in the middle of the brush, there's a tiny little tube to allow that liquid to go through. Maybe if you have like a bigger brush pen, it might work. And I'm seeing, I'm seeing a tiny little bit of mica, but for the most part, it's not, a lot of it's not coming out. Like we had better results with the spray. coming out maybe I have to use a different brush if you've ever taken apart one of these brushes they have this big barrel in there and I think that's what makes the difference let me show you so this is a Nouveau shimmer marker spectrum noir I guess not Nouveau See how it has this barrel? Somehow this barrel affects the flow of the shimmer. So maybe I just need to change pen, change the barrel, change different pens. Yeah, now this is getting harder to squeeze. I think I've clogged it up. 
whoopsie whatever generic water pen this was it's not working I would use an empty um, Spectrum Noir pen if you have it. But here's the spray. It's almost all completely dry. But this is what's going to happen. See, it comes right off because there's no setting it. So you got to you gotta spray it with a, a gloss or something to um, set it. But I think they're beautiful, and I think I'm going to have a lot of fun with them. This is the way I normally use them. I stamp them out. And use them and then I'll just spray a gloss or a um, hairspray or some kind of finish over it to knock it to um, to uh, get it to work yeah mixing it with water works fine Terry so we did that up here but you can see look once it's touched water again it reactivates so if you don't set it it's gonna move so that's the that's the only downside to this and the reason they did that is because they wanted to make it friendly for people that are going to make makeup um, you don't want to put any kind of chemicals in there so uh, if you use like a Vaseline or a gel or um, what do you call it lip gloss you know for those kinds but you can use this it even tells you on the back here like I said that you can use it for soap nail polish, eyeshadows, makeup powders, epoxy. So a lot of different things you can do with this. Um, you guys have seen my nails have gotten um, powdered before. All they do is they put clear gel polish. They take this powder, rub it over top, and then they set it in the gel polish. And then it's permanent. So as long as you have a fixative on it, you can use these in a number of different ways. I will most likely use it majority of the time just for stamping. Just remember to set it when you're going to be using it for stamping. That's all. So mixing it with water does make it a little more. It is water soluble, but it doesn't set it. So just keep that in mind. All right. Any other questions? And this is what I use. Krylon Shortcuts spray and it's the same spray I use on my pan pastels clear gloss and it's just a tiny little thing of spray paint okay if you did not catch the email from creative vision stamps um, you might want to join her webpage because I will read it to you. Hold on. For those of you that didn't get it, they're doing their virtual sale. Hold, please. Okay, virtual stamp convention today is going to give you... Um, a free make and take if you purchase from Creative Vision Stamps. Um, the paper cut is going to give you, oh, Simply Stampin'. There's a company called Simply Stampin'. Simplystampin.net will give you free shipping over $20 with every order and receives a free card to make. Um, the paper cut has 20% off. Now, the paper cut, so you guys know... They are the ones that sell, what did I use here a second ago? They sell this. The um, For you guys that like to do foiling and hot foiling, black glossy paper cut, 25 sheets of 8.5 by 11, $15. Also works if you're doing alcohol inks on it. Very, very nice paper for that. Um... 20% off entire retail order. Any order over $50 will receive a free triple fancy tag card making die. And see here. Oh, Technique Junkies. Technique Junkies has 25. Oh, sorry. Paper Sweeties. I'm reading these wrong. Paper Sweeties has 25% off all stamps and 50% off products that are retiring soon. Technique Junkies is where I got my um, Heidi Swap Toner Stamp Ink, if you want to try that out. Um, I will also say this about Technique Junkies. She has 
um, heat transfer foils. Very, 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 very similar to Creative Vision Stamps foils. However, they are four inch rolls. They are not six inch rolls. Now they are 25 feet in length. The only reason I recommend them is if you are overseas, if you are in Canada, if you are in Europe, she does ship overseas, but you will get a shorter roll. So it's not the six inch roll you get from Creative Vision Stamps. It's a four inch roll. So just keep that in mind. Um, but she has 25% off. Um, the Paper Hollow has 19% off. Okay, that's weird. My Craft Room has 15% um, off. Impression Obsession has 25% off. Oh, my God, that's crazy. Double Trouble Scrapbooking has 20% off. Marco's Paper. Okay, Marco's Paper has digital gloss cardstock and the matte cardstock. So that's from Marco's Paper. They have 20% off. And A Colorful Life Designs has 25% off. So this was all in an email from Creative Vision Stamps. I hope you guys all got it. Very, very cool discounts there. Please check out those vendors. I've purchased, obviously, from several of them. All of them. <laughs> um, but if you can get... 20% off, you know, that adds up. If you put in an order that's 50 bucks, you know, you're getting $10 off. That means you're basically getting your shipping for free. That's how I look at it. So, um, what else you guys got? Anything else? Right. Perfect Pearls. Um, thank you, Stacy. Perfect Pearls have a resin built into them. So that's the biggest difference is because these have a resin built into them, you spray them with water and then they're set. That's the biggest difference. But you, it's not recommended to use Perfect Pearls if you're going to be doing any kind of cosmetic application, soap, makeup, stuff like that. Um, I think it's about the same amount in each pot. These pots are a little smaller. I do like that these are wide lid pots, so it is easier to put extra product back in there. So I will say that, but... Who can say no to 60 colors? <laughs> That's the big selling point to me. 60 colors? I'll deal with setting it myself for 60 colors. I can handle that. Thank you, Mary. Yeah, Marsha, what state are you in, hun? Bonnie, did you go to the doctor? How are you feeling, Bonnie? We got to get you well for your grandson. The only other thing I didn't try out that I have here on the side of my desk is I have some glycerin. Let's just play around with that. We're already here. Oh, good to hear, Bonnie. So I have a little glycerin. This is what I was using to make my own hand sanitizer. Hey, Patty! Oh, Marsha's in California. Yeah, Marsha, they're going to lock... Patty, I don't know if you heard this or not, but I heard Pennsylvania's going on lockdown starting tomorrow. Um, What's a color we didn't use yet? Ooh. Get this one. Aqua blue. Isn't that pretty? Now, glycerin takes a really long time to dry. 
but I remember practicing with something else a while back and the glycerin did end up drying, but it just took forever. Glycerin is basically what's in Versamark. I'm gonna put the heat tool to it and see if we can get it to um, set. This is a pretty like aqua color. I found glycerin in the drugstore and it was over in, I think where the lotions are because they used it as like a ultra dry skin moisturizer. That's where I found it, in the drugstore where the lotions are. But it's not gonna be at any regular store, like you have to go to a drugstore to find it. Oh, here's my little sample when I was showing you guys the comparison between mink paint, mink ink, mink transparent paste. So I wanted to show you guys that. This is the original mink paint, which I used today, which is now discontinued. This is the new mink transparent paste, which is basically a thicker version of this. It's just texture paste. It is glossy. And then this is the mink screen ink, which is white. But they all have this kind of flexible consistency. Um, so you can foil over them. That's all. Just wanted to show you that. A mess here. All right, let's see if we can put the heat gun on this and get this to dry. I guess glycerin is just another form of like vegetable oil. Still sticky. <laughs> Definitely not dry. Yeah, I've seen people use glycerin in their um, Versamark as well. Um, I wouldn't use it by itself because it, it's basically, I, I think it's a derivative of vegetable oil. So it works in keeping your skin soft because it's an oil. But... Not so good with the crafting. Unless you're going to use it like Versamark. But again, you got to spray it when we're done. Yeah, I found it in the pharmacy department where the lotions are for dry skin. So here's my little handmade embossing powder. It's a big purple mess. Let's see here. Yeah, it doesn't try, Stacy, because it's oil. <laughs> it's sticky oil. All right, I just put that makeshift embossing powder over top of there because it's stuck. So now it's like. 
purple and teal. I want to give it a second to cool down before I stick my fingers in it. There you go. Well, the clear embossing powder mixture worked pretty good. Let me shake off our extra powder. So, I mean, that's pretty cool. If you wanted to make an embossing powder with it, you could. I just used some clear embossing powder and mixed up some mica in there. So, that's pretty cool. Oh, I wanted to see how this is going to do here. Ah, oh, that's not going to work. <laughs> Okay, guys, done playing with that. I like it. I am very thankful for Arteza to send me that. Like I said, I will put the link down below for you guys if you're interested in it. And there will be a coupon code. They did send it to me. I think it's Nancy Stamps, but you never know. Sometimes they put a number at the end of it. And um, that coupon, I think, is good until the middle of April, she said. I'm pretty sure they have free shipping. Um but I will link that for you guys. And like I said, the only other thing I would purchase with that is some kind of setting spray. Either hairspray is probably going to be your cheapest option. Or if you have some kind of setting spray you're already using with your um, pan pastels, then that'll work too. Okay, guys. Gamzol is mineral spirits. Gamzol is a non... Um, they took the scent out of it. Non-scented mineral spirits. Hi, Arlene. Yes, odorless. Thank you, Patty. All right, guys, we're going to call it a wrap on the Arteza mica powders. Hope you guys like them. I'm definitely going to play around with them. Um, if you missed yesterday's video, I played around with the new Hero Arts kit. Oh, I did find out the little pond is not a pond. Well, it could be a pond. It's actually supposed to be the dirt. I'll just show you. <laughs> it's supposed to be the dirt around the tree. <laughs> but you can make it a pond. You can make it whatever you want. It's your imagination. Let me show you. I know. I think, you know, with the social distancing, everybody's kind of tired of being cooped up in the house and... It is, it is hard, you know, especially when you can't have any adult time. You're stuck with your kids, can't go to work. Um, it is difficult. So I want to try to ease everybody's pain. Just be safe. Think about your families and spending time. I will say while I was out um, today picking up junk food for the kids, um, I noticed a lot of people were out. Like, not next to each other, but I mean like a lot of people out walking. Um, people at... Um, you know, just, just out, you know, so that was a nice thing to see, kind of reminding me of my childhood where we didn't have internet and we didn't have TV in the late, you know, it was go outside and play. So I thought that was kind of cool to see. Um, you know, you see a lot of posts about people, um, you know, right now is a great time for card makers because this is when we should be sending thoughts to our friends. We should be writing letters to our friends. Um, take this time to enjoy each other's company and share stories and catch up. And, you know, it is scary. We're kind of going to be locked down in our homes. But at the same time, this is what we need to do to keep each other safe, to keep our country safe, um, to slow, hopefully, the spread of this so the medical community can get a handle on it. And let's give them a break. You know, these people are working tirelessly you know, for hours and hours on end, not even going home to their own families so they can try to get a handle and tackle this. So thank you to those people as well. 
So I know it's going to be tough, but let's hang in there. Let's craft. Oh, Stacy didn't have to do that. Um, let's support each other. And I will be here and I will, of course, make videos. And Leah and I count the thumbs up at the end of the night. <laughs> um, and I'm watching crafters videos, you know. I'm not just sitting here. I am working. Um, luckily, like I said, my company is, is doing, they're taking advantage of doing web trainings and... Um, we're communicating with each other and being each other's support group through work as well. So I'm very thankful for that. And I know it's not going to be easy. It's going to get harder. And hopefully um, it will pass quickly if we all do what's asked of us. So if you don't have to go out, please don't go out. Please check on your um, elderly neighbors, friends, if there's anybody that needs anything. You know, of course, from a safe distance. Um, please don't let your kids go run around the neighborhood because they're really not supposed to have contact with each other. And kids apparently can be carriers even if they don't show any kind of like symptoms or anything that can affect them. They could still carry it. And we want to minimize the spread of this and try to hopefully the weather warms up and we can all get past this quicker. Yes, Patty. I, I just went over that a lot of um, a lot of vendors are going to suffer, and 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 honestly, I don't know how long the post office is going to continue to deliver the mail. I actually thought about today putting a card in the mailbox for the mailman because I got like three packages today, and being like, "You are awesome." I wanted to put like a bottle of water in there, a bottle of hand sanitizer in there for him, some some rubber gloves and um, a, a, a card and a roll of toilet paper and just be like, Mr. Mailman or Mrs. Mailman, you rock for, you know, keeping the rest of us sane. Oh, there's no dye for the water. Okay, then. Fussy cutting it is. I thought there was a dye. I was going to be all lazy and run it through the machine. <laughs> Yeah, and some of my friends are even doing, like, neighborhood, like, kind of, like, block parties where, hey, I'll stand in my driveway, you stand in your driveway, we're outside looking at each other, but we're on the phone. You know, we're not um, within six feet of each other or whatever. You know, Leah, we took the training wheel off of her bike last year, so um, Leah's going to learn to ride her bike. That's what we're going to do. We're going to work on that. I can't go fishing yet. I'm a little bummed out about that. Soon. Stacy, I I gotta say, I'm biased to the Artezas because for the price point, their color pencils are nice. Now, if you can get Prismacolors, I'm not gonna lie, the Prismacolors are nice. They are very nice, but they are also very expensive. So when you guys watch me do my videos, yeah, I use my Prismacolors, but honestly, I like the Artezas as well. I can link those two for you guys. Um, I love their watercolor pencils. Their watercolor pencils make it so easy. I am biased to the Arteza products because, listen, I'm a budget crafter, you guys. I spent a lot of money on that baby Cricut Joy. That thing was $179. Was it worth $179? Probably not, honestly. Um, but it has come in handy. I mean, I think that machine is probably, realistically, if they lowered the price point to a $100 machine, if it were half the price of a large machine, because it does half of what a large machine does, and it's half the size of a large machine, that would probably have been a better price point for them. But they're getting their $179 for it. So I try to cut corners at other places. Um, which I've shown you guys, like I don't buy, when I'm doing my stamping, I stamp on good paper. But when I'm doing like mats, matting paper, that's cheap paper. Um, I try to buy good quality inks and stamps the first time so that I'm investing in that and I don't have to continue to buy inks and stamps. Um, but the Artezas are a really good way of saving money and getting a pretty good quality product. Is it the best? No, it's not the best. Um, is it the worst? No, it's not the worst. It's just right for its price point. That's how I feel about the Arteza products. 
and their shipping is super fast, especially right now with everything that's going on. Um, and they always give you a lot of colors. They really do. Okay, so this is this is our little um, pond tree thing, whatever. I stamped it out in brown because it could be your, like I said, uh, your little Japanese garden. What do they call that? I don't know. It's it's like where they, they do the sand and it's very peaceful. Um, or we could have stamped it in blue and made it our little pond. We could put it as like our little pond down here or something. I don't exactly know what their idea was with this because there wasn't any instructions. But I was watching some videos last night. I'm like, well, I, I can make, totally make that into a pond or make it into sand or, you know, whatever. Japanese Zen garden stuff. Yeah, here you go. So I want you to give you, and there are some like little stones there. You can make a little um, step stone uh, walkway or a little wall or just stones, whatever. That's all I wanted to show you. Oh, that's good. That's good. Okay, guys, what else you got? I am going to contact the two people that won the uh, hot foil set. They did not get back to me. I'm going to reach out to them again and say, hey, you got a few days to hit me up or otherwise I can't send you your package. And I'm going to figure out with Tracy. I'll get in touch with her on how to do some kind of a... Um, not a contest, but just to get you guys interactive. Maybe I will make a, a Nancy Stamps Facebook page where you guys can post. You know, we'll come up with ideas. Like, we'll do weekly challenges. Maybe we'll do, like, a weekly challenge on using Perfect Pearls. Maybe we'll do a weekly challenge on using old supplies. Will you do one? Oh, I want to do one on background stamps, and I want to do one using embossing folders. So it'll all keep our minds off everything. It'll be just for fun, and all you got to do is just make something and take a picture of it and post it on the page. So I will work on that for you guys because it sounds like that's something you guys want to do. And it'll be a supportive group. It'll be non-sponsored, except by me. <laughs> um, and we'll go from there. We'll do foiling contests, hot foiling, mink foiling. We'll do water coloring. We'll do, yeah, I think we'll do that. All right, you guys be safe. I need to feed these children some dinner. And I am off for the weekend, so certainly I do not have anything scheduled to come up for tomorrow or Sunday. So keep your eye out. We'll probably do some more lives. If you're not a subscriber, don't forget to click the button. And you'll get an email notification. For the rest of you guys, oh my gosh, we've been on here 103 minutes. We got to go. 39 thumbs up. Woo woo. All right, I love you guys. Be safe. Be sanitary. Figure out how we're supposed to use this pond, sand, dirt thing. I don't know. Okay, guys. Bye-bye.